Hello folks, um, I decided to show you a, uh, a game analysis. I uploaded my match against uh, Vezizou, um roughly a week ago and um, I wanted to analyze at least one of the games that we have played but maybe more because um, they were quite interesting indeed and it's not every day that I get to play against a top class grandmaster so uh, I thought I would like to have a bit of a look at it. Uh, even though it was a blitz game, I guess it's uh, worth analyzing it. So we are in a line that I really enjoy playing for no apparent reasons, which is this bishop g5 salty that has a lot of tactical venom, but if black knows what he's doing, in the end of the day, white has got absolutely nothing in this opening. So here he played b5, which is perfectly fine, and here is the first trick that uh, white... Uh, likes to use in this variation which is bishop takes f6. The idea is that if he retakes with the bishop then I have got knight takes b5. It's important to take with this knight so that uh, after the capture my queen is covering the third rank so that I can retake on this one with the queen. The reason why it's important is because now I want this one to be guarded and after queen c6 knight takes king f8 e5 it is a bit of a mess although the computer prefers black but uh, for a human this is a tricky position to play because of the shaky position of the king and the unusual material imbalance three pawns for a piece so that was the line I was opting for but he very cleverly inserted knight takes b3 right here which basically denies me the opportunity to take on b3 with the queen and so I had to take with the standard a takes b and after bishop takes f6 now uh, this piece sacrifice shenanigan is not nearly as good because in the end uh, my king is uh, quite vulnerable so I opted for uh, a somewhat wussy king b1 I should have played g4 right away he castled I play g4, so now I am trying to create some king side attack by g5, f5 as soon as I can. And obviously he's going to try b4 and uh, then a5, a4, which is uh, equally nasty looking. And this is where I made the first mistake in the game. I played knight g3, which appeared to me at the time very logical, but it turns out that g5 followed by f5 is uh, the way to go because there is no time to waste. There is a very nice drawing variation here. I will try to recall it from the top of my head. Hmm. Let me think for a second. Oh no, I remember now. F5. I think it's rook. Some Somewhere there was rook c8 in it, but for the life of me now I can't remember. Dang it. Anyhow, um, the point is that, um, yeah, I played now g3 with the intention of playing f5, f6, but really the knight on g3 doesn't really contribute to this scenario. So that was a bit unnecessary and I gave him an extra tempo. f5, now the attack is kicking in full swing and... Uh, this position he made a mistake by playing e5 that was really bad he should have played uh, rook across uh, again in fact I think yeah that's the variation that I wanted to mention that um, how did it go take take uh, rook here bishop takes he e5 takes takes knight f5 yeah that's it okay sorry I sped it up a bit because I wanted to remember so queen g4 hitting he hitting um, the bishop so e5 is a must queen takes pawn takes and after knight e5 bishop takes e4 and the game ends in a perpetual check quite amazing attacking chess on both sides and this it's somewhat usually it ends in a perpetual check so this is what he should have done Instead he played a very weak e5 and I felt in the game that that was not right but I couldn't quite exploit it. I went knight b5, the correct move, he played queen c6, I played f6 uh, and he played rook c8. Now in this position I totally missed c4 which is really sad because it's somewhat standard in this position or in these kind of positions I should say. And after takes, knight takes, all of a sudden my king's position is very sturdy and this is about to be broken up entirely. Um, yeah, white has got a very nice advantage here. Sadly, that was missed by me. I played rook d2. But then he made his fair share of a big mistake because he played a4 and that's an awful blunder that again remained unexploited because I took the stupid bishop. After knight f5 it's pretty much curtains because I'm threatening to take with check which means that the bishop has to retreat, but if the bishop drops back, I simply take on d6 
and uh, yeah, it just fell apart. Rook is hanging, this is hanging, and my king is rock solid. So, and if he takes, then after queen takes, I have got an even stronger threat down on f7. And if he drops back to f8, of course, then I just take on here, and uh, now the bishop can't go anywhere because of knight uh, e7 check. So, pretty much, I missed here an auto win. It was a terrible mistake, but then again, I was very excited about playing against Wesley, and uh, nerves got the better of me. I took back with the queen, apparently, pawn would have been better. And yeah, from here on, this is my last mistake here, and I'm being slowly but gradually and surely outplayed. Uh, I didn't realize it would take d5 at all. And apparently after bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, pawn takes, um, I've got quite splendid chances of uh, stirring the pot here, uh, big time, because of these two pass pawns are ridiculously strong. But then again, this sadly has avoided my attention, and so I played queen f3 with the intention of putting pressure on f7. Queen e8, and my last mistake before everything went completely out of hand, I should have played rook here with the intention of again putting more pressure on here. Although after bishop a6, uh, my rook would have to leave, but that also means that the a5 is blocked, so he can't do much to me either. Instead I went takes, and after queen takes d6, queen, e6, and the queen swap this position was hopeless, but I put the icing on the cake with this blunder, and after check I decided to call it quits, I'm getting mated next move on a1, um, so yeah, this is how I should have and could have defeated Wesley So in a blitz game, and I didn't, uh, but nonetheless it was great fun, by the way, uh, in the previous video you can see the whole series, uh, in a somewhat different style as I was live recording it, so if you want to, you can uh, enjoy it that way too, but I thought that this analysis would shed light at some of the missed opportunities and some of the deeper thoughts of the game, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will be back with more soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.